Plus from the Dust Podcast. Uh, we have Ruben on tonight. Uh, he is based out of California. Uh, he's actually heavily involved in their uh, Quail Forever uh, chapter that he, I'm not sure which chapter, we'll get into that later in the podcast, uh, but he's going to talk about that. Uh, he runs his dogs in a little bit of uh, Navda training. Uh, so we're excited. I don't believe we've had anybody on uh, based in California. So just excited to to hear about the birds out there and uh, how he, you know, training his dogs in California and uh, whatnot. So if Ruben, you can uh, introduce yourself. And we'll go from there. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Ruben Mata. I am from California, uh, Oxnard, California. I am our uh, vice president for our local Quail Forever chapter here in Ventura County. And I recently got involved with uh, NAVDA out here. Everything was pretty far for a while, and it, it all kind of ended up working just right. So I'm, nice. I'm happy that I'm involved with NAVDA now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what got you involved with Quail Forever? Um, it all kind of just happened um, by accident, really. Uh, I was uh, with a different hunting club where you pay a, a, a yearly fee to to go hunt these properties and stuff and um uh, i was supposed to meet this uh one of the what would you call it like a regional representative for for that club in the area yep. at a property that we were supposed to go hunt and for some reason he ended up showing up and this truck full of dudes pulled up to this gate and i thought they were part of the same club that I was with. So I asked them, I was like, hey man, are, are you guys with, with the club that I'm with? And I was, they're like, no, we're with Quill Forever, like pretty proud of it. I was like, oh well, man, dude, I, I'm sorry. Like I was just trying to, I was supposed to meet somebody here and he's not here. So, he, and then I just built up the courage to uh, ask to see if it was okay for me to go uh, hunt with them. And it was for Dove Opener, if I was uh, able to go hunt with them and they went into the truck, they talked to each other, and they brought me along. And once they, we were sitting down, chit-chatting, one thing led to another, and I got pretty pretty vested in it with, with Quail Forever. Nice. Yeah. What's, so what's you, the main species in California that you hunt? Uh, valley quail. Is it valley quail? I knew it was yeah, a quail. Valley I, quail. Know which, I didn't know which one it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you find, you find gambles further east, southeast. Yep. Um, there's mountain quail out here. There's chucker out here. Um, there's tarnigan out here. There is uh, there's pheasant out here. There's grouse out here, but most of the gre- uh, species of grouse are protected. There's uh-huh. only like a, a short window for I think it's sooty grouse that you could hunt. Um, but I, I haven't looked up at, at, the, at the stats or the details of it. Yeah. What are the numbers like out there? Um, so last year wasn't it, last year was pretty bad. Last year was probably one of the worst years that I've that I've had hunting. Um, I always came back with with a handful of birds, but the cubbies were super, super small. So when you go hunt a cubby, like I don't know, morally, me, I, I don't want to shoot every bird in the cubby because then the cubby will die off. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you pin a bird or two out of a of an eight. 10 bird covey and and that's enough you know but those coveys that i went chasing they were they were far they were miles in from the areas where i usually hunt and um so the and and the birds were very very much mature so they would flush out way far you were i don't know 60 yards out and the birds would flush out in front of you and there's no shot you can't take a shot at that so um but the numbers were very low. Um, but this year, we've been doing a lot of uh, guzzle restorations with our chapter and stuff like that. And the numbers of birds that we've seen are just phenomenal. It, like, it makes everybody so excited for the season to get here because we know there's going to be an abundance of birds. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what kind of restoration did you call that? Guzzlers. So Guzzler, guzzlers. That? Yeah. So out here in California, I don't know if you guys heard, we're always in a drought. We're, we don't have any water. It don't rain very much. So what these guzzlers are, are they are a container that you build in the ground that has a tub that collects water. And there's a, like a, an apron on it. So when it does rain, 
um, the water collects on the top and it runs off into this tank where that where small game could go in there and drink water. So there'll be water year round for all the wildlife. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. That is nice. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what we do out here. Um, that's one of our, our, our main focuses with our, with our chapter that uh, we, every month we have a project like that. How so, big are those, big are those tanks? I'd say they're probably like, uh, well, the tanks themselves are probably like, yeah, 80, 100 gallon tanks. Okay. Big tank. Um, but the whole circu- like the whole area of the guzzler is probably 15 feet squared. It's a, okay. it's a big chunk and, and there yeah. and it varies. Sometimes they're made out of fiberglass, sometimes they're made out of concrete. I've seen some made out of uh, corrugated steel. So it, it all varies what people have around, I guess, and, and hmm. we go around. Have you ever had to, have you ever had to go out and fill them up? Just for the yes animals? yes we have yeah yeah we carry water in the in the water buffaloes and go out and fill them and stuff like that too how so much? we consistently go and inspect the, the guzzlers as well yeah how uh how many do you think you guys have done this year we've probably done what it we're in july august uh probably like five five or six nice that we've <laughs> refurbished yeah how, so these are kind of already like pre-made out there yes. they've been around yeah. for a while right right in the early okay. 1900s 19 like 1950s 1960s they've been they've been and out there and stuff like that. were they purposely built in, back in the 1950s for that, for that? yeah nice yeah. so the birds know like hey this is where my where, water source is right right exactly and Man, sometimes like that'll be yeah they'll be full year round for the most part, sometimes they'll crack and the water will seep into the ground and there'll be no water around. But even in the areas where there is guzzlers that are like completely destroyed, there's still bird numbers there. So yeah. they're getting their water from somewhere else, you know what I mean? But not as yep. not as healthy as the numbers where there's a good guzzler around. Yeah. <laughs> how far are they spread out? Like how far? Um, it, it varies. They're, they're there's different spots. Um, I mean, there's some, if you go on a road, sometimes you'll find them, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile in. Sometimes they're even, they're way far. The last one we did, it was only accessible by side by side. And it was a 45 minute drive from Ooh. the park on a side by side to, oh, to the guzzler. So, yeah. So we had to go up there a day before gear up take all the stuff that way the next morning we would just be able to get there and get to work yeah so yep. it was a two-day ordeal two full days Dang. so that's yeah. crazy <laughs> yeah do they uh are they easy to see like let's say someone goes out there hunting are they something yeah, that you can is spot them definitely. Spot? Yeah, yeah 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 definitely if you're if you're around you're gonna see this random ass piece of concrete in the <laughs> middle of nowhere gonna be like oh that's pro-. they might not know what a guzzler is yeah but it's that's, not like a bomb that's shelter what, or something you know right right exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, all right we're walking up on some kook <laughs> right? out here that's oh god hills, ready for, hills have hills have yeah. eyes on us yeah and we've also done some projects where we've carried um because forest the forest service out here you can't you can't drive any vehicles on non-maintained roads so we had this one project a while back where we had to carry everything back by mules. And that was pretty oh, cool. Wow. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. How many mules Jesus. does you guys have? We had four mules. Nice. Yeah. It was cool. And there was kids. Like, it's like we're so family oriented. Our, my kids come out. Uh, other uh, chapter members' kids come out. And once, you know, everything was mule in, packed in. Yep. Um, the people that were running the mules took the kids for rides back and forth. So the kids yeah. were having a blast. You yeah. know, it, it was it's so awesome to be involved with with a chapter and a club like that. Yeah. How yeah. big? Uh, how big is the chapter that you're with? And then, kind of, what is your role as a vice president of that chapter? Um, well, I think our immediate, like our chapter members, our active chapter members, are are about twenty. Okay. Give or take five. Uh, you know, everybody's busy. And now, like, 
there's a lot more younger members in the club and everybody works, you know, everybody's yeah. trying to make a living. So um, I'd say around, around there. And uh, my role, I guess, as a vice president is uh, I try to recruit people as much as I can, you know, be involved yep. with uh, like, as far as this year, we're having our banquet in September and I'm, you know, I'm taking a pretty big charge and on trying to, get that whole thing situated and stuff like that yeah. so just I, I, anything that they need really so uh, hey, when, there. when does season start for you guys october 18th hmm. for quail. That, that's quail when does dub start september 1st september 1st same yeah. as everyone else yeah did, so uh, where in california are you north south so middle? los angeles 45 minutes north of los angeles and about 45 minutes south of Santa Barbara. Okay. What's the temps like during this oh, time so of year right, in September? Right so. now, it is overcast, and it's 73 degrees. These Gosh. last two weeks have been Shit, that's hotter than normal. So it's cool when it is here. Yeah, but it, it's just not California weather. That's what I pay for. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean? To be warm. <laughs> yeah. Is it humid as shit out there? Yeah, right now it is like I said, these last two weeks have been pretty humid. But other than that, it's mid sixties year round. Really? You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's it's crazy. Hot. I didn't realize that. I figured it was like stupid hot. No, no. I mean some it, it all depends. You get your hot weeks and but for the most part is in your mid sixties year round. Yeah. Um I know out here when we hunt early quail in October, like you can't run much because it's still pretty warm. Yeah. It doesn't get very cool just yet. But um, yeah, it's it's and it it's goes nice. till when does it go till season? Uh, the end of January. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty good season yeah. then. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, you it's do a, a good season. season. Yeah. So what uh, what breed of dog are you running? Do you have more short hair. One? I have one, one, one short hair. Yeah. Nice. And like my mentor or good friend of mine, he runs a poodle pointer. So uh, I just I just got a poodle pointer. Do you? Where'd yeah, you get it from? Um, out of Wisconsin, Jeff House. Oh, okay. Just be careful. Uh, those poodle pointers like to eat birds. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a running joke with me and my buddy. We were hunting out. And, uh, we're chasing chucker, and uh, we spooked up a covey of quail. And I, I I nailed that quail pretty hard. It was pretty close, and uh, probably like twenty five. Uh, maybe like 20 yards but it was like a swinging shot and the bird fell into like these rocks and his name his dog's name is jace the poodle pointer he was chasing after it he got to it and i he brought back the whatever was left of the bird and uh happy you know happy as he could be and brings it back and he looks right at me and swallows the bird oh, so he had lunch. yeah so Damn. Yeah, it was a running joke with, with him and, and that poodle pointer. He's a good dog, though. He's a great dog. Yeah. How old is your dog? Six. Six. Nice. Yeah, he'll, so, be, he'll be seven in November. Awesome. Diesel Diesel just turned uh, – he's my black lab. He just turned eight today. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, nice. Nice. That's so, awesome. So you just started in – so your dog's – he said it's going to be seven. Do you plan on – getting another one yes get another one another <laughs> short GSP? hair or yeah another short hair i really like those dogs man they're they're awesome i've hunted different over different dogs and i i the temperament what i need and what i what i need from a dog and what the dog can give me short hairs is is for me yeah I, nice. I love those dogs i love the 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 what is it called the beautiful look of an English pointer how they're so like straight with like drawn yep. out with sharp lines they're they're badass dogs but I just I don't know they they seem I've heard stories of them being pretty like uh not mean but very aggressive dogs and I yeah. just I, I don't know I like my short hair uh, yeah. I'm good with that. nothing wrong with that <laughs> nope what, uh, we, got, we got some buddies that love their short hairs and they yeah, really. have setters and yeah, so we got a whole mix of mix of dogs in our groups. Yeah. Nice. And you said you guys are in Wisconsin? We're in Iowa. Iowa. Oh, Iowa. 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 Yep. What do yep. you guys hunt out there? 
mainly pheasant for pheasant. upland birds. Uh, you can go like south part of Iowa and maybe run into some quail and yeah, it's maybe Huns are starting to <laughs> Hungarian partridge are starting to make a little bit of a comeback in the north northern part of the state. It seems like yeah, like um, north central, but it's kind of like. It's like you said, it's, it's almost morally hard to hunt them, you know, like quail right. for say around here because you yep. see groups of four or five, you know. Right. Uh, they just don't, kind of live. Yeah. You don't see yeah, many groups of 10 plus. And, right. Um, you know, and like Huns, I've never seen a big group of Hungarian partridge, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I, I haven't either. I mean, we just saw the one that one time. That was the only one I saw. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. And we did shoot it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was more of the person who shot it didn't wasn't one hundred percent sure what it was, but he thought it was one. And yeah, right. He won. So it's kind of a weird spot. I mean, it was yeah. in the middle of switchgrass, no trees around, nothing. You know, so yep. definitely that was not just a, lost. Yeah, definitely wasn't <laughs> expecting it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right on. But yeah, that's. I so, see you guys do a lot of geese hunting, huh? Yeah, that's Tyler. Yeah. I just started. If you can see that one back there on my screen, uh, got oh, into okay. it. I just got into it actually. Uh, last year was like my first full season of it. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> it was funny because I always like kind of wanted to try it, but just you know, it just takes a lot more than it does to get into upland hunting. You know, with right. decoys and calls and. Uh, you know, just all that good stuff. And my cousin took me with him two years ago and I told him, I was like, I'm going to try it. And I'm like, one, I want to be able to eat the bird. You know, everybody's right. like, ah, oh, goose tastes nasty, you know? And, really? Um, but yeah. the, I haven't had, I haven't had goose jerky. I yeah. Didn't say it, but so I've, I've had like goose and maybe it was the way it was prepared, but it was not good. I was like, yeah. Oh. Really? I, I, I ate game. it. I ate uh, it and choked it down because I didn't want to like waste it. We, went, we literally, we literally, well, it was with Sorensen. We literally shot him in the morning and went back and cleaned him. We're going to eat him. And I'm like, oh my uh, God, this is terrible. And yeah. he's a pretty good cook. Really? So I can't, yeah, I, I did not like it. But, wow, that's interesting. But the, yeah. so the guys that I started hunting with last year, um, he's a really good cook. One of the guys that, he smokes a bunch of food, just a really uh -huh. good um, cook all around. And he's like, you just got to try jerky. And so I use a um, camp chef. I don't know if you can hear my dog breathing in the background, but no, I can't. Uh, my, so I have a camp chef and it's, uh, you put it at 185 uh, for like, what is that? Like a pallet smoker? Is what yeah. You're pellet saying? smoker. Yeah, yep. Okay. Pellet smoker. Yep. Uh, put it at 185. Uh, for I, it's between four to five hours just kind of depends on like the temperature outside it seems like so if it's warmer outside a little less time colder you know a little more time uh, but I run them through a meat slicer I bought just a cheap 60 Amazon yeah uh -huh. 60 dollar meat slicer uh, set it to 14 the whatever fittest. 14 is you know and <laughs> yeah. um, run it through uh, then I run it through a bunch of cold water to like drain a lot of the blood out of it okay. uh, and then i he recommended using backwoods seasoning so they sell that fleet farm i don't know if fleet farms out in california or not no. um, i'm sure any type of uh seasoning would work but this work, one uh, -huh. uh you know you put it or it's not a seasoning but uh when you a brine or like yeah you, know, you put it in water you know and uh, you leave, I leave it in there for like 12 to 24 hours. Just kind of depends on, you know, like what time I put the goose in there and what time right, I'm right. cooking it, you know? Um, but man, you, you do that and cook it. I've, I've brought it to people and like, man, this is some great beef jerky. Like what? no, 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 I, no idea that it's goose. He bragged it, 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 yeah. it about it all the time. Yeah, That's it is. Wow. Good. And I'm like, he never, he never shares any of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> my my wife takes it to work because it's so good. Like she uses oh, it as look a snack. Now he's blaming it on his wife. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Nice. I can't give you one stick, Nick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hopefully this year. I just and I'm not one to like brag about my 
cooking. I'm a decent cook, but it's like yeah. it's freaking it is super good and that's awesome. Uh, so it's it's actually made me like it a lot more because I know like every goose I bring home is gonna be a good <laughs> meal, you know. And yeah. uh, um so that so that's really nice. And if I if I didn't eat it, you know, like the first time I tried it, I did a crock pot thing. Uh-huh. It was so oh dude, it was nasty. Like I heard, I heard somewhere if you make it into pastrami, it's supposed to yeah, be really good. A lot of guys say to do that. I've just never I'm gonna try brats and uh sticks this year with it. Uh-huh. Um another guy he did a cubed it up and then uh put it in a whatever type of seasoning, r- scrambled it around in there and then defat fried it. And it tastes, oh, it was super was good, good that way, too. Really? Yeah. It's just, I'm trying to think of what it, I'm trying to think of the flavor, because, like, when you bite into it, it's super red on the inside, but yeah. it doesn't taste like a red meat at all when you've defat fried. It's it's so huh. weird. Um, but it's it was so good. Uh, so, so yeah. hold on. So, Nick, if you had to describe goose, in a flavor like what's the closest thing that you could like compare it to liver it's just like <laughs> probably I mean, in a crock pot liver yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's just wow, like it's like when I, I i can remember having it it was super like chewy and then it it was so it was so like gamey like just really? thing to eat. yeah like you couldn't get the game taste out of it and I don't mind that because I eat deer meat and all that right. stuff last time, but man, I could not get over it with the goose. It was just like, it was, well, was it overcooked, undercooked? No, it can't be. Well, you want to cook. No, it, uh, no, I think because he wrapped it and I remember it being wrapped in bacon and then he let it sit in the bacon grease and oh, like soak wow. it up. Yeah. And, and, bacon, and it still too, wasn't you know. good. No, and it's still, yeah. I was like, ooh. But, <laughs> but duck, duck, uh-huh. we did, so we had duck and goose. The duck was good. Yeah, the duck was good. You could, you could tell right away when you're taking a piece, like if you grab just like a piece wrapped in bacon, but then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the right one. <laughs> but then well, you choke it goose. down. You choke it down because you don't want to offend. You're like, oh, I'm just going to eat this. But man. Right? He's asking you, why are you drinking so many beers? Oh, I'm pretty fucking yeah. thirsty. You're just trying to get yeah. the taste every, out of your mouth. Every nibble, I, every, I just take a little nibble and then take a drink. What are you doing? I'm just swall- swallowing the meat whole, basically. Right? Oh, man. That's funny. Not even uh, chewing. Yeah, no. Not even chewing. Just put it in my mouth and take a drink. Whoa, whoa. This is a podcast guy for up and hunting. Uh, that, that sounds like it's going somewhere else. Oh, no. It's totally fine. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, man. <laughs> that's funny. Got me. Uh, uh, do you guys do you guys do any waterfall hunting out there um i personally don't i know a couple of people that do waterfall uh hunt a lot i like like you said it's it's super expensive and i've never i've never done it so like i don't want to invest in something that i'm not going to say that i'm not going to like it because i'm sure it's super fun but i a You know, the people that do duck hunt all the time that I know are always duck hunting, having big trips and doing their own thing. You know, that means that if I want to be involved, I'd have to take a big trip like that, too. And everything around here is so far for waterfowl hunting that it is just, you know, it's just I have to go with the right people, I guess. And when they have the when I have the opportunity to go somewhere, somewhere near. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like I just I kind of just fell into this group it's the fields are literally i mean five ten minutes from my house yeah that's awesome he was begging hey hey, if the fields are that close to your house i'd be begging too shit yeah (laughs) i I was like i mean there was like a few hundred of them dumping into the field and i was like wow someone's gotta hunt this and you know i went and talked to the farmer and they're like here's the Here's the guy's number that's been that we've given first access to for years, uh-huh. and uh, he's hunted. He said they've hunted there for like 20 years at least. Oh wow! Uh, these guys' fields, and they grew up in the area, so they just know like all the farmers around. Uh-huh. And uh, they're like, "Yeah, we don't have 
um, you know, he's like, we don't have any dogs. So I was kind of nervous because I never, it was my first time out with these guys, with my dogs. Uh-huh. And then first time out with people I had never even met. I was, I met them that morning, got to the oh, field wow. and I got to the field early because I was brushed in my, the dog blinds and he jumps out of the truck and he's like, who the fuck are you? And oh, I was like, shit. You're like oh. I'm like, did it? I'm like, is this the wrong? In my head, I'm like, I know I'm in the right field, but like, right, right, is this right. the right person? And then he's right. like, nah, I'm just joking with you. Oh. You know, I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, he I'm made like, you fuck her there for yeah. a second. <laughs> like, I'm like, uh, I don't know how I'm going to talk my way out of this one. Right. Uh, so, yeah. but no, I, after that, it just went super well. And, uh, you know, they, they love the dogs and, um, we do like a game feed at the end of the season and I'll throw oh, in cool. for like gift cards and whatnot for the, uh-huh. for the farmers. And, um, so it, that's awesome. Yeah. So they said, I, I got into it more just cause like I said, the fields are so close, you know, for, right. for me to chase pheasants, uh, you know, I, I can't go during the week, but I can goose hunt during the week. Cause I can right. meet, work at three, get set up, you know, and, um, get the geese flying in at night so right so it works out pretty well but that's awesome yeah no it's it's worked out super good um but how many so let's i'm going to take it back to kind of talking about california um how many miles are you guys putting on on a daily quail hunt last year it was probably on a Probably, I think my reader said somewhere around eight miles, something like that. For me, walking miles for me. Yeah. Yeah. But before, right. like I said, Your the years before double that. that oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But the years before that, dude, like, there was coveys of, like, 60, 80, 100 birds. Holy so, like, crap. Yeah. So, we didn't have to, like, walk far. You know what I mean? Within two miles, we were into birds. And it was we were in two birds. Yeah. So like, you know, so that's why like last year it was, it was sad. It was sad to see it like the way it was, yeah. you know? So we, we had to work for it last year. They're there. You just had to work a lot harder, you know? Yeah. Do you have to, so when you get into those big cubbies, do you just continue following them until you. Yeah. They break off. You know, you break the big, yeah. Yeah. You break yeah. the big cubby and then my dog will lock up on a couple of birds and then, then yeah. they'll disappear and yep. we're on to the next side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. How far is your dog going out? Uh, I've got him out to range around 250 is the furthest nice. he's been out. So nice. yeah, he goes, I, I've been working on that with him and he, he's, he's built it up. He's doing pretty well. Yeah. Nice. What's the Hold, holds the point to get there? Holds the point. Yeah. Holds the point. St- steady to wing and yeah. shot or just, just recently within the last year, it, to me, it wasn't a big deal because I, I really, yeah. it doesn't bother me one, one bit, but I've been working with a uh, dog trainer that that's his style. And uh, I've done all my training myself, but he, he explained to me what the reason for that was. And I told him, well, but the reason for me not really bothering me is because I want him to get an advantage of finding the bird and finding it quick. If he's yeah. already getting a running start at finding the bird, then he's going to find it that much faster and come right back and get to work again. Yep. Yep. You know, so What's, that was uh, my logic behind that. What was, if you don't mind, what was his reasoning for doing the steady to wing and shot? Do you know? Safety. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yep. Safety. And, well, uh, that, and then they, they say they can mark the bird better um, from standing instead of moving. Right. Um, which I could, I could see that too, but. I think the same way you do. Like I yeah. shoot that 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 bitch gets up. You better just go get it right away. <laughs> right, right, right. And like now, like this last within this last year or this last off season, I've been. It looks nicer too. You know what I mean? I, I get it. In the in beautiful wing shoot, birds still locked until you release them. You know what I mean? It just looks. Yep. It's a, there's a look about it. You know, and, and it's good. It's nice. So I've been working with him on that, and and he's been doing pretty well. But like I said, if he breaks, if he breaks his steadiness, I'd shot. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give him Edison medicine. You know what I mean? He'll, yeah. He'll be fine. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. How did you get involved with Navda? Um, the lack of 
birds. There was no birds to train my dog with. And uh, they, every month, they have a uh, training event at one of their grounds. And they provide the birds. You just have to pay for them. Which yep. wasn't a problem for me. Um, in the past, the way I got birds to train my dog was we would drive around the city, find an abundance of birds on the power lines, and we would throw feet on the ground, and we'd try to trap them. That's the only way we were able to get birds. Um, so People, people probably thought you are homeless. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, at least they're trying to eat the birds, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, throw birds. But, like, you know, you do what you, you can for these damn dogs, you know, because it's, it's – it's sad when people have a, a not not that it's sad, but I know a lot of people that have bird dogs and don't see the full potential of their animal. You know what I mean? Yes. It's 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 a beautiful thing to see them like unravel and and, and see it all play out. Um, yeah. But yeah, for, that's Tyler that and I talk why. about that all the time since I just got Jet. Like my goals with him and what I want to do, and I'm going to send him to the guy that I bought him from. Um, I am going to send him to him to get him force fetched. Um, oh, nice. And then get him get him ready. I think I'm going to do NAVDA, the utility, uh, the, uh, yeah, the natural ability and then the utility uh-huh. test. Um, so I'm going to try those. And I'm not a professional trainer. I'm going to get him up to that point. I'm going to hunt him this year. Right. And then next year I'll send him to him to, to tighten him up a little bit and things that I'm not uh, good at. But I also travel right. to work. So it's, it's tough for me to. Right, the time. I, I, I can't do it every day. And right. need, I always feel like a dog needs that every day for like two months. Yeah, and they they do. Sand. Yeah, and they and yeah. they do. I know there was a point where my wife told me it was me or the dog. So I. <laughs> so I you still have the dog? Where's your wife? I still have the dog. And I still have the wife. <laughs> and so, you're talking in the truck right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> and Jeez. I don't have my truck. So. Probably doesn't have your house either. Is that going? <laughs> No, it's still no, there. It's yeah, still there. It's still we, there. That's why we we were right. That's why you're trying to catch some pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make ants meat, guys. Come on. <laughs> Not sure they actually taste like chicken, but you can let us yeah, know. Yeah, I wouldn't even. No, I wouldn't even try it. There's no way. Probably better, I'd probably better reduce. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh man, let's hope not. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we. We used to. You, try, you, you let us know once you try it. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we uh, we caught pigeons back in high school. I used to work on a farm, uh-huh. and uh, we would wait till nighttime and take a spotlight out into the barn, and you'd shine the spotlight on them, and they'd never see you coming. You could go up and just grab them. Grab like it was nothing. Yeah. Really. Could, it was super simple to do. They would just freeze. They wouldn't move. Oh and, wow. We actually uh, pulled a senior prank and let him go in the high school. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So that's my that's my uh, experience catching pigeons. <laughs> it works, yeah, but it works super good. That yeah. guy's gonna get a lawsuit slapped on his ass. <laughs> no, I got called. I got called. I got called to the principal's office that day. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, they knew it was you, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I, remember, I saw you carrying a bag that you never carried in before. Yeah, that was probably that was probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Looked a little suspicious. And it, and it was coo- and it was cooing too. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a pigeon. Like What's what that? was that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> my mating call. Now I get the oh cool. man, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's good. So what? Uh, what's your uh, training schedule kind of look like leading up to season coming up and then what's uh the beginning of the season looking like um so my training schedule you mean is that what you're saying yeah with my dog yep. um just i've been running them a lot uh as much time as i i'm able to get uh, mostly on the weekends um i have a full schedule with work and my kids and sports and stuff like that so yeah um so like i said once a week or once a month uh, one week in a month, we go to the NAV, the thing, and we do that. That's how we get our bird, uh, Contact. our birds. And then uh, the rest of the time, I just take them out to the park and, and just let them run, let them not get all stiff in his joints and still yep. work some of that fat off. And then uh, September 1st, we have a little, uh, uh, what's it called? A little uh, tradition that we do for, for dove opener. And, uh, I'll, I'll hunt September 1st, 
and then I'll take that day off of work and I'll hunt, and then I'll hunt Labor. I think it's Labor Day, which is the next Monday that following year. Yep. yep. And I'll take my kids out that Monday because they, if not, they'll miss school, and we'll go hunt my buddy's uh, property out in Santa Barbara. Nice. Then, Do you guys have a pretty good dove population out there? No. No, I didn't no. know if it was the fly route down to because it seems like Mexico has a ton of. I didn't know if yeah. California was a way down or. They probably do the same damn thing they do with pigeons. Just put some food on the ground and try to catch no, them. No, dude, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah. Those Mojo decoys work pretty well, though. Yeah. So last year I used them, and, uh, dude, they were flying right towards it. And my my boy was shooting it, and it, it was perfect. It all worked out perfect. Yeah. So that's how um, we do the, the doves. And then mid-September, there's a short season. I think it's a week long for the ptarmigan out here, and I want right. to go hit that. So. Right. Are those we'll up in? Are they up in the mountains? Would be, or, that'd be yeah. awesome. That'd be awesome to hunt. Yeah, we had a guy yeah. on um, that does it in Alaska. Oh yeah, dude, it's he had so some wild awesome. stories. Yeah, wild stories. and of course, like everything's like it's super like high elevation, so like it's 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 gonna be a hard hunt, but we'll see how it goes. Are you running GPS in? Yeah, yes. yeah, Garmin. I'm taking yeah the Alpha two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, oh, that'll be, yeah. that'll you, be good. You like it? Yeah, I do because I used to run uh, the Alpha 100, and I also had the Garmin InReach just in my bag. Okay. So this one has both of them in one unit, and the battery lasts forever, like much better than the Alpha 100. So nice. yeah, I'm I'm I love it. I yeah, love that. I we just there. switched to them, switching into them this year. So oh really? Excited, yeah, excited to to use it the only thing that so i i got the 550 plus as well and i like that oh, more okay. for like training purposes uh -huh. over the 200 because the controls are just much easier to use yeah uh, so when i train i run a i run a doctra two, yeah 2000 it's a way older unit yeah um and it just has three buttons yeah. with the uh, with the dial you know and yep. and that works out perfect but i yeah. had I felt like I needed that GPS because sometimes my dog would lock around or lock up around a big sagebrush, and I'd call him and he never come. You know, like yeah, it, you can't find it him. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, I couldn't find him. So I it was I invested in that unit pretty pretty early on. And, and, and you, it works I'm out thinking about me. get. I'm thinking about getting one for the new yeah. pup. Yeah, they're yeah. nice. Especially Definitely with an a, investment for sure. Yeah, especially yeah. I think if you have a. A pointer that's like you said out there 200 250 yards it's be yeah you know even if you have the beeping collar it's like if it's windy you don't know where right, that right beep is or yeah. whatnot you know it's just and just safety measures right you could always find your dog yeah if they yep. get caught in a yep. trap or you hear them in that's, a scuffle or some crap we had a buddy um god be years ago seven years ago or so and he got a new gsp and he didn't gun break it right or gun train it right. So uh -huh. when birds flew up, we all shot. Don't even know how he ran for the hills. And uh, yeah, couldn't find him. Took, took four wheelers through, couldn't find him, couldn't find him. Left the kennel there, came back like, I don't know, it was like four hours later, and he was actually by the kennel, luckily. Oh, wow. And so he had to work with him a lot. And I still don't know if he's 100%, but he's better than what. Like, he's not going to run away. He just kind of like freezes, I think. Right. I heard yeah. that's that's hard to like like to get rid of what's their their gunshot like that. It's it's hard to get rid of it. Yep. Super yeah, that's hard. like the quickest way to ruin your dog. <laughs> right, right. Which is like the scariest, it's like the most concerning part of probably training, you know, is just right doing it when right. Ready, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean jet turns uh what, twelve weeks on Monday, I believe, and I mean, I'm walking around here, hitting pots and pans, yeah. just plunking things together on purpose, making loud Even noise. Kids, little cap guns yeah. and just and let then, them shoot them around. Well, tonight we actually had like those air bags that are wrapped in a a, a package. Uh huh. Uh, oh, the little pop them. things. Uh huh. Yeah, but they were big ones. They're like they're probably like, like this. Uh -huh. So I got them out and I threw a tree on the ground, and then he started going after it, and I just stepped in one. Oh, nice. Like, oh, right. nice. And then I did. And then I did. You're on the right track. I did the other yeah. eight of them, and he never, he never even moved. So I was like, all right, we're, <laughs> That's we're cool. about there. 
yeah. we're getting there where I can start start slowly introducing some shot around him. And I got to, I got to go, uh, I start, start with this coming in. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's so different for me to train this versus like a retriever. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just complete backwards. Oh, really? Everybody's telling, me to, everybody's telling me, like, let him go. Uh, like, the guy that I'm going to have train him, he's like, don't hold him back. I'm telling him to sit. Right. Many commands, you know, just hear kennel and basically no, those are all they want me to do right now. Get them on bird, yeah. bird, bird. Right, then, right. Just let them build its confidence. Yeah. That's what yeah. they need to do. Yeah. We're like a lab. I mean, I had my lab right away sitting, you know, you know what? First I week hear- and stuff. And he's doing all this heel stuff. And I, he was doing all this stuff at like, Four four months old. I'm like shit. I'm not yeah. supposed to do anything. <laughs> you know it's weird. I've heard you're not the first person that I've said that that they don't teach their pointing dogs to sit, and I can see why. I like I I I I know why, but to me, obedience is first thing. You know what I mean? And that's what I. That's why I'm always like, oh yeah, it's so backwards, right? Right. I think it's how yeah. intense you are with the training too, because I know that if you you reprimand a dog or you try to correct the dog while they're when they're doing something they're not supposed to if they're on point or whatever they they tend to sit if they know how to sit yep. that's what i've yeah. heard that's the reason yeah. why they don't teach them to sit and i'm not i'm not a trainer by any means so uh, you know people listen to this don't say oh you can do this do that yeah. i'm just taking advice of the guy that's going to train my dog <laughs> right 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 no no i completely understand i completely yeah. understand yeah for me, it works that, for me. Like I said, you know, yeah. everybody's different. Every dog's different. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I might like, decide on the next dog, if I get a pointer again after this one, I might decide, ah, oh, shit, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, but since, right. He, since he's my first one, I'm like, I don't want to, I'm not going to screw him up. Like, you just tell me what I need to do. And that's right. Main thing I is making not. sure the little devil doesn't jump up on people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's always the worst part with pups. Oh, yep. yeah. But they'll get over it. He'll be good. Is he going to be a family dog, or is he going to be solely hunting dog? No, he's he's already already family. He's almost potty, potty trained inside the house. Yeah. Oh, I okay. Two, I, have, I have two little girls, three and nineteen months. So, oh, be, okay. He's hanging out with them and all that yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I find hard it hard to. to have a dog with. I don't know. You, you could do it, yeah, sure, but I yeah, know. I, I like. I know, I know people that 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 have that that have or are just they're hunting dogs. They are not allowed inside the house. They're kennel most of the time. You know, they go out and run them every day and and do everything yep. that they do. But they get kenneled and uh, they they don't roam the house. You know, and it's always the older the older the older crowd that runs their dogs like that. In in my in my situation out here. And um, so, uh, yeah, but to me, I, I, you know, my dogs are allowed inside the house when, when we say it's okay and they roam the house yep. and, and yep. stuff like that. They sleep inside the house. And, and, yeah. Yep. So they're family dogs too. Yep. It'd just be hard. To, I don't know. It'd be hard to not make them family dogs. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Especially like in Iowa when it's negative 40, 40. out, you know, and you're yeah. like, you can't even go outside to play with it or anything. Yeah. Like, I'm not just going to yeah. leave it. Right, it right. Goes, so. Meant for itself. Yeah, no. But that's how they were forever. That's, well, I mean, well. when I was growing up, my dog that I had was an outdoor dog. My mom I was hell bent on. She was no way that dog was coming inside. And now if, now if I bring my dogs back, she's they're curled up on the couch with her. And, right. You know, and that's, so th- that went out the window, but... <laughs> Of course, when I was in high school, it was a little bit different. Yeah, oh yeah, I hear you. So, awesome. Well, uh, what? Uh, so, what do you guys do for your banquet? So we have um, it's a big outdoor event. Uh, we have barbecue. We have silent auction. We have raffles. We have um, uh, we have the girl local girl, girl scouts help out and do activities with kids. Nice. We have a whole bunch of stuff for the kids and uh, giveaways and, and stuff like that. It's it's mostly to help us generate money for all yep. the projects that we do throughout the year. Yep. Yeah. How Thank many, you. what's uh, usually attendance kind of look like? Um, anywhere between 120 and 140 people. Nice. 
Yeah. So it's a good turnout. It, it's it's definitely grown in the last couple of years, and in uh, and a lot of more people as time goes on are asking when the next banquet is. So that's, yeah, that's exciting. Good. It, it's yeah. a good feeling for us. Yeah. Yep. Are you uh are you hunting mainly public ground out there then? I'd say ninety five percent of it is is public. Yeah. Do you have how many? Do you guys have a bunch of acres, kind of where you live? Oh yeah. So the most spotted national forest is the largest national forest in California, and okay. then we there's BLM all around it. So it there's a, so much land that it's yep. it's easily accessible. Yeah. Do you uh do you find much pressure where you go, or is it so big that I, it's I, just I, not bad? I haven't. I've I've seen trucks. Or, or cars on the same roads, never in the same fields that I'm hunting. That's um, crazy. Yeah, I'm, I've never ran into people, like, in the same field or anything like that. Man, in, in <laughs> Iowa, it's so much different. Like, yeah. you, you got cool. to get there so Three in the early. morning to make yeah. sure that nobody gets to your spot. You know what I think it is, though? I, I think there's a lot more hunters in, in the Midwest and out there where it's – not, hunters not with many. less public land too <laughs> yeah yeah but i think out here you know it's such a big state you'd think there'd be that many more hunters but i think a lot of the hunters here are all weekend hunters like they're not like you know they just hunt opening day and if they can't get a bird on opening day they get discouraged and they won't go back out again yep. um, because i think, I, there's, like I think there's a lot of that in iowa too actually. yeah fair weathers yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like I, had, I just I've, don't. I've, I've had it where there's a group. It's cold out, and you have a group of guys. Oh, uh, I mean, it's like zero. Uh, yeah. walk, and that's the best. Well, I'm not gonna go today. I'm like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that, the colder the better. The dogs work yeah. better when it's cold. Dang right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, like I said, I don't. It's rare that I run into a vehicle in the areas where I hunt. Um, so yeah, I, I. I and I've hunted a lot last year, and I didn't run into anyone on a field that I was hunting. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That that would be nice to kind of to have that because, yeah, it's like the public ground around here is – once it gets known that there's birds there, you know, it's – It gets flooded with people. Yeah. Yeah, but I can remember there was a place here in Iowa where we went to early, Tyler, me, and a couple of our friends, and um, we were there before anybody. And a truck pulls up behind us, and it was it's called I Happen Iowa. So basically, it's somebody's farm, but they let people hunt it publicly, right? Oh, okay. But uh-huh. they own it. Pulls up behind us and comes up and says, "Hey, we guys doing? We're like, uh, we're gonna hunt this." Well, my I don't know if remember he said it was his brother, or his yeah, cousin, some or whatever. Relative. Some some relative owned this. He's like, I was really getting to hunt this. I go, it's public hunting, dude. Yeah, well, and it was it was like a sixty acre field. So we, but we knew there were birds there. And he's like, well, I'll take this side and you guys take this side. I was like, what a turd. Yeah. yeah. So we eventually got him to leave, but I was like, man, we're going to get in a fight with this guy. Cause he, right. he would not, he would not leave us alone. Jeez, man. And that's the thing too. Like, you know, I'm one person that won't hunt the same spots year after year, after year, after year. Like, yeah, I have these hunting holes where, I know there's always birds and where I like, to, like where I take my kids. So I know that they're going to be successful yeah. or new hunters, but like, you know, to me, it's, it's all part of the adventure. Like, Hey man, just go another mile up the road and, and hunt it. You know, you got a yep. dog, there yep. are birds everywhere. You know, you just got to find them. Yeah. Yep. That's what we kind of do. It's with usually how trips. much work you want to put in. All right. right. How much, how much are you going to walk? Are you going to go back right. to the far as corner of the, the property, which is, you know, 300 acres, or are you going to just right. stay right here in this little circle? Right, right. right. Yeah. Got to hunt what other people don't. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so what's so a, uh, tell, yep. Yeah, your favorite your favorite hunting story. Or favorite. Um, if you have multiple, you can tell us this too. Uh, let's see. My favorite hunting story. I guess it would be when my son shot his first uh, wild bird, his first wild quail. Um, we were hunting, and uh, a bird flushed up in front of us, and I went to shoot it, and I shot, I missed. My son followed up and knocked it down. 
I was like, yeah, that's that's my boy. <laughs> like I didn't even care that I missed or anything, dude. It was it was, it was perfect. It, it was it was amazing for me. That's awesome. Yeah. How old is he? Yeah, he is 15 now. Nice, nice. Yeah. I bet it reminds me pumped. of, uh, and I know oh, I said this on here before, but we went to uh, we went to a preserve to hunt. And I took my uncle and my cousin, and my cousin couldn't hit shit. Um, but so my uncle decided to uh, basically try to shoot the same time he did and hit the bird, and told him good job. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell that my cousin didn't shoot it, and he's like, "Oh yeah, high five him!" And he was excited. I'm like. Everybody I knows never, he I never, shot I never, I never said anything. I was just like, I looked, at, I looked at my uncle and I was like, yeah, whatever, man. It's like everybody gets oh. that participation ribbon now. <laughs> right? Oh, man. That's hilarious. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, Ruben, we appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, oh, absolutely. Sorry, a lot of good sorry. laughs. Yeah, sorry. I couldn't make it yesterday. Oh, no so. worries. Oh, no I worries. thought I missed. I thought I missed it tonight. I thought it was at six because my phone said it. So I texted Tyler. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, Mike, I missed it. <laughs> so I was like, seven. It was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so no, no, we definitely appreciate it. It was great talking to you. Great meeting you virtually, and uh, maybe we'll be able to meet up someday or something. And uh, absolutely, uh, man. If you guys ever find yourself out west, give me a shout. Yeah, for Thank sure. You, man. So, find yourself awesome. in the Midwest. Give us, give us a holler. Yeah. All right, absolutely. Have a good season. Uh, right. We look forward to following you along on Instagram. Awesome, dude. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you later. See ya.